Hi, I'm Eva Murphy from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and this is my Leave Insert Maths Grinds channel. I'll regularly add new videos for both higher and ordinary level maths, so make sure you subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Okay, question 7, 2016 was a 3D trig question. Um, a glass roof lantern in the shape of a pyramid has a rectangular base. C, D, E, F. That's the base of your lantern. And its apex is at B as shown. So, so you have to imagine that, that 3D shape coming out, out of your desk, okay? Do not make the mistake of, of, of seeing it as a 2D flat shape with a rectangle and a triangle on the top, okay? Um, make sure you see it as a 3D shape coming up out of the table at you where B is that pointy piece at the top. The vertical height of the pyramid is AB, okay? So that is a perpendicular line which drops straight down from B, which is that apex there at the top, right down to the table at B, where A is the point of intersection of the diagonals of the base as shown in the diagram. CD is 2.5, CF is three, of course. And because it's a rectangular, he's also three. And of course, EF there at the back is, is also 2.5, okay? Show that AC is equal to 1.5 meters correct to two decimal places. Okay, so in these type of questions, you've the trick is to be able to spot all the right angles. Okay, so so when they ask you for a C, um, you could try and solve it as a non right angled triangle. I think you'll find very quickly you don't have enough information to solve it. So therefore, the 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 trick is to form right angles using the line in question. So AC, as you can see, I, I'm not going to form a right angle no matter how I do it, unless of course I go straight up like that. You can see this one. Okay, now there's a right angle. Okay, and again, this is this is the, the power and spotting that, that that's a perpendicular line coming down at, at the base of the rectangle. It's a 3D shape. So there's one, but again, I don't know a whole lot of information about it. Um, so I know this side, I know this side. So if I keep going up here, can't I form a right angle as such, okay? And now I have two sides of that right angled triangle, okay? And diagonals bisect each other. It's one of the properties of a rectangle. So if I get this length here, I can just divide it by two to give me AC. OK, so that's where your properties in geometry come out of your properties of your shape. Diagonals bisect each other. OK, so let's do this one by finding the length first of CE. OK, so CE squared is equal to um, CD squared plus uh, DE squared. And this is by Pythagoras' theorem. So it's equal to CD squared, so 2.5 squared plus 3 squared. Just grab my calculator, 2.5 squared plus 3 squared. And I'm getting 15.25 for that. Let's square root that to get the length of CE. And I'm getting 3.9051 for that. And therefore, the length of AC is equal to half of 3.9051. So I'll divide my answer by two. And I've got 1.9525. So 1.95, yep, so that's perfect. Correct to two decimal points. Okay, so you'll end up using Pythagoras' theorem an awful lot in this um, because you're spotting the right angles. Okay, so this question, if I remember right, it's one of the long questions, was a 55 marker. Um, and, and this was 10, 10 marks. A lot of them, a lot of the different parts were 10 marks. So the angle of elevation of B from C, so angle of elevation is you're looking up. Okay, so you're looking up 
towards B. The angle of elevation of B from C is 50 degrees, i.e. the angle BCA is 50. Okay, so BCA, so this angle here, is 50 degrees. Okay, and an angle looking down is, of course, an angle of depression. So 50 degrees there show that the length of AB is 2.3. Okay, so there's my 2.3. OK, I also now know that AC is 1.5. So let me write him in. OK, so again, I see another right angled triangle coming up here. OK, so this is the first question they're really examining if you can visualize 3D. OK, so can you see that basically I have a right angled triangle coming up like that. He's 1.95. Uh, I have to find AB. So he's what I need. And he's 50 degrees. Okay. There's my right angle. So silly old Harry caught a herring trolling off America. Let's label our sides. So your opposite, your hypotenuse. So you must be adjacent. So we have opposite over adjacent. So it lends itself to tan. Sine, cos, tan all give you the same answer. It's just which do you have enough information about. So I know nothing about the hypotenuse. So that's why sine and cos is ruled out. And that's why it must be tan. Okay. So tan of 50 degrees then, it's always tan of the angle, is opposite over adjacent or 1.95 tan 50 degrees gives me x. Uh, just make sure your calculator is in degree mode. Yeah, 1.95 tan 50. And I'm getting 2.324 for that, um, which is equal to 2.3 meters. Okay, so that's that one done now too. So 2.3 meters up here. Okay. Find BC correct to the nearest meter. So find BC. OK, so it's the same triangle, basically. I'm just finding BC now. So you have a few options here, OK? So remember your right angle trig, uh, page 16. You have sine, cos or tan at your disposal, or you have Pythagoras' theorem. Pythagoras' theorem, though, you need a lot of information about your sides. So if I was to use Pythagoras' theorem to find a side, which I do need to find, it's this side here, I need to know the lengths of the other two sides. But I now have them. I have the 1.95. I have the 2.3. So this question was trying to help you rather than asking what they were. It told you what they were. Um, and when they they do that, always look to see, can you do the part coming after it, okay? Because they've given you the previous answers. So Pythagoras' theorem is, is an obvious one to use for it. But of course, you could use, now you do know the hypotenuse or, or you need the hypotenuse. You could use um, adjacent and hypotenuse. So you could, of course, use cos 50 degrees um, to work it out or, or whatever you need it. You now have the opposite because we just worked it out to be 2.3. So you could use sine 50 degrees and do it that way. So it really, so it really doesn't, doesn't matter, matter which way you do it. I think your sound has gone a bit there. Oh, thank, oh, you. thank you. Okay. Let me just disconnect, just disconnect and, and connect. Is that any better, guys? Any feedback? Yeah, that's good. Okay. Yeah, that's fine now. I've just taken the headset off, okay? So it's just computer audio. So let me know if it, if, if it starts echoing. Okay, so I'm going to use Pythagoras' theorem for no other reason at all. It's probably even the longest way of doing it. So BC squared would be equal to AC squared plus uh, AB squared. Okay, um, so it's 1.95 squared was one of them, 2.3 squared was the other one. Let's try that into the calculator. So I'm getting BC squared. Uh, 
is equal to 9.9. Oh, 0925 and square root that so square root answer and I've got 3.01 did I have to show it was equal to anything no I had to find it to the nearest meter okay so to the nearest meter that's equal to three meters okay uh, you can of course use sine cos tan no problem at all well sine cos okay so again I hope that makes sense you can see that I suppose the good thing about these questions is that the actual mechanics, the trig questions, aren't too hard. The difficulty in these type of questions is being able to spot those right angles, okay? And some are just naturally better at, at seeing them than others. And especially if you do um, any one of the construction or, tr or drawing type modules, even in junior cert, you will be naturally able to see them better, okay? Um, and if you're not, you just have to look out for the right angles, okay? Um, I, I, which is what I have to do. I don't naturally see them. So find the angle BCD. So where are we now? BCD. So we are down here in this one to try and find the angle BCD. Okay, find the angle BCD correct to the nearest degree, okay? So B, C, D. So again, I think, what did I just find? I just found B, C, okay? Um, so let me mark in my three, okay? Now it's a lantern, so it's gonna be symmetrical. So he's obviously three again. Um, so can that help? So I'm looking now at the side B, C, D, okay? So for example, a common mistake that would be made if you're not good at um, visualizing um, right angle or 3D trig is you might think that BCD there is a 90 degree angle or or, or you might not. It, it just depends on, on what you spot. OK, but BCD is the side of that glass lantern and it's different to the angle BCA. OK, it's on a different trajectory towards it. OK, so I see BCD. I see a non-right angled triangle as such. Okay, uh, B is at the top, so C, D. I see three or two sides of side three. Okay, that's the one we just found on the one before. And I see a side at the bottom of 2.5. Okay, so non-right angled trig is what's coming into play here. Okay, and um, when it's non-right angled trig, you're up this side of the of, of the log tables. You cannot use sine, cos, and tan or Pythagoras' theorem on a non-right angled triangle. So you really are the sine rule or the cosine rule. Okay, and again, both of these give you the same answer. It's which one can you use? So remember that the cosine rule is mainly around sides because it's small letters, okay? And that's the way the log tables are written. So mainly about sides, one angle. Sine rule, an even split between sides and angles. Okay, so coming back to our question, we have three sides and we have to find an angle. Eva, could you not just bring a line down from B and use Pythagoras now? Can you bring a line down from B and if, if, on your diagram there? So the, you mean this line here that's already down? No, don't you, the line that the diagram you've drawn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and do right angle. Bring yeah, you could. I, I presume you could. We'll check it afterwards and just see out of pure interest, do you get the same? Yeah. So hold that thought and let's do it afterwards, okay? Because I'm actually going to use this question as an opportunity to show you um, one of the biggest mistakes that's made with the cosine rule when you're finding an angle, okay? So I suppose that's my motivation, I suppose, for doing it this way as much as anything else, okay? So hold that thought, but really good thought. Um, right, so I'm gonna shoot with this one for now, because I wanna show you the mistake that's made, okay? And then we'll see, is it of course an easier way to do it? So the cosine rule, a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus two bc cosine a, okay? So it, it is akin to the Pythagoras theorem, just some background information, okay? Um, because the only difference being this extra bit. So when it's a right angle triangle, you end up getting cos of 90 degrees, okay? And cos of 90 degrees 
um, is zero. So that's why that disappears. Okay, anyway, just some background information. Let me fill in what I need, okay? So rule thing number one to look out for, if this is the angle that you need, this is cos A, okay? It's the only angle in the, in the cosine rule, which means that the side here must be the one opposite the angle you want, okay? And that's how the cosine rule figures out which angle you're looking for. In other words, if I put 2.5 out here, then I naturally solve for the angle across from it. Okay, so that's the first thing. The side here must match the angle in question. Okay, so that's the first place you can make a mistake. After that, it doesn't matter which is B and which is C because of the angle A. Okay, so three squared is nine. Now, this is mistake number two coming right up. In many cases, people do this all in one go. Okay, and that's a big no-no. You cannot do that. And the reason you cannot do that is because of BOMDAS. Okay, BOMDAS states that you must multiply before you can add or subtract. Okay, which means that I must take care of this procedure here. In other words, the two, the three, and the 2.5 belong to cos A. They do not belong to three squared plus 2.5. So I cannot split up this number and do some of the subtraction before I do the multiplication. Okay, this is the bit you do on its own. So 3 squared on my calculator plus 2.5 squared on my calculator gives me 15.25. Okay, now I will put into my calculator 2 by 3 by 2.5. Okay, so that's fine, that's okay to do. Okay, subtract him. So nine minus 15.25, and you get minus 6.25 being equal to minus 15 cos A, okay? So obeying the rules of BOMDAS, which is the order of operations, the order you must do your maths in at all times, okay? Divide across by minus 15 now. And you're getting 0 0.416 is equal to cos A. Okay, so then cos inverse of both sides gets rid of cos. So do cos inverse on your calculator of answer and you get 65.37 degrees. Okay, and to the nearest degree then, of course, 65 degrees. Okay, so the question was, can you drop down a perpendicular there from B and will you get the same answer? Okay, so let's try that. So let's draw our triangle, okay, 3, 3, and of course 2.5, and let's drop down a perpendicular, okay? And because it's an isosceles triangle, it's going to split the bottom into 1.25 and 1.25. Okay, and use right angle to trig here. Okay, so again, label your sides. So here's your hypotenuse, here's your opposite, and here's your adjacent. Okay, and we want to solve for the angle this time. And um, we know nothing about our opposite. So again, write out your verse, silly old Harry caught a herring trawling off America. So we know nothing about the opposite, so it's going to lend itself to, to cause. So cause of the angle equals adjacent over hypotenuse, uh, cause inverse of both sides. And not surprisingly, you get 38 degrees to the nearest angle, 65 degrees. Okay, so because it is an isosceles triangle, he is going to chop him right down the middle. Okay, so whichever way you saw that was the right way to do it. So again, yes, right angled trick. Okay, cool. Okay, 
So I hope that makes sense. Part five. So again, all those parts I've done now, all those first four parts were each worth 10 marks. This one is also worth 10 marks. And then the sixth part was worth five marks. So find the area of glass required to glaze all four triangular sides of the pyramid. Give your answer correct to the nearest meter squared. So let's go back to our pyramid, let's have a look. Okay, so four sides, if you can imagine it, of your, of your lantern, okay? Um, and we have to find how much glass. So these are triangles that we're dealing with. Okay, so there's one triangle of sides, three, three and 2.5, the one we're just after drawing. And then the ones here on the side, a little bit different, three, three and three. Okay, so, okay, let's draw our triangles so you can see what, I, what I'm talking about. So ignore my drawings now, okay. Uh, three, 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 and 2.5. So I have two of those ones and I have two of those ones and that's what makes up the four sides of the pyramid. Okay, could you do half the base by the perpendicular height? Okay, that's a formula for the for area of a triangle. You would have to know your perpendicular height, which is this one here. Now, not hard to find it again, very much um, using right angle trig. You can, of course, find that, especially now that you know the angle is 25 degrees, okay? And you can do the same on the 3331 three, three because the angle there is going to be 60 degrees because it's an equilateral triangle, yeah. Okay, so each of those are 60 degrees, okay? So you can do it and find the perpendicular height. And then it's half the base by the perpendicular height. Or of course, you can do half A, B, sine C, okay? Which is the area of a, I suppose, an, a triangle where you don't have the perpendicular height, but you do have what's called the included angle, okay? So if you're taking two sides, you have to take the included angle, okay? That's what that means. So take A, take side B, but it has to be what's called the included angle, the angle that's in between the two sides. So I don't know if you saw it there at the start, I had the other versions of this written down. I could have written down half AC, but it'd have to be sine of the angle B because B is the included angle there. And of course I can go the other way too, half BC, but it'd have to be sine of the angle A. Okay, so don't you, you don't have to get too bogged down on what's A, B and C. Okay, so in this one here, we have 65 degrees. Um, I'm going to just simply go half A, B, sine 65 degrees. Okay, and for this one, half A, B, uh, sine 60 degrees here. Okay. So let me put them into the calculator to figure out what they are. And of course I have to multiply each of these by two. So 0 0.5 by three by 2.5 by sine 65. So I have 3.3987. And then let me go back and change that 2.5. Three, 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 and the six, maybe quicker to write it all in again. 3.897, okay, so by two and by two, 7 7.794, 6.7974, add them together, and I'm getting 14.5914, Give your answer correct to the nearest meter. So 15 meters squared. Okay, is the amount of glass that is needed for the um, four sides of that pyramid. Okay, I hope that's okay. Another roof lantern. Okay, so I remember the Leaving Cert this year and, and people got confused with this one because of course, they referred back to the last one. But another roof lantern in the shape of a pyramid had a square base C, D, E and F. The vertical height was three, where A is the point of intersection of the diagonals at the base as shown. The angle of elevation 
from C to B is 60 degrees, okay? So in other words, that angle in there is 60 degrees. Uh, find the length of the side of the square base of the lantern. Give your answer in the form root AM, where A is an element of N. Okay. So again, what do we have about this one? The vertical height AB is three. Okay. So we need to somehow take him in. What are we trying to find? Find the length of the side of the square, okay? So any of these sides we need. Okay. So what's the easiest way to do this one? Okay. Could we project it up there? As in find the length of AC and project it up. Would that be one way of doing it? It probably would. Okay. Um, yeah, so basically I'm looking at the information I have, which is 360 degrees. You can see it's all contained in that right angle there. So it means that that is the easiest dimensions I have to work with, which is finding BC if I wish, or finding AC. They're kind of my two choices. Okay, now I need to find the length of the base of my triangle. So therefore CB doesn't really work with that. AC kind of makes a little bit more sense. Okay, so let's find AC. So let's draw my triangle. So he's three, he's 60 degrees, and he's my right angle. Okay, so again, label my sides. There's my hypotenuse, there's my opposite, and there's my adjacent. Okay, so why do I always do this even though I know it? Because that is signaling to your corrector of your paper that you know it's right angle trig and you know how to do right angle trig, okay? So if you mess it up as us humans do, you have at least banked the marks for, for knowing that it was a right angle trig question. Okay, so let's find AC, which is on the bottom, which is the adjacent. Okay, so it's opposite and adjacent that I'm working with, okay? So it lends itself to tan. So tan of the angle equals opposite over adjacent. Um, and when X is on the bottom, you'll find that the two change place, okay? These always change place when X is on the bottom. So put that into my calculator, three over tan 60 degrees. I forgot to close my bracket. And I'm getting root three. Okay, so that length there is root three. Okay, so you can see my natural instinct was to extend that up there and form a right angle there that contains the two sides, okay? Um, so what are the properties of a square as in the diagonals, okay? So diagonals again bisect each other on a square, but because length and width are identical, then they are literally all the same length, okay? Which means therefore that um, CE must be two root three, okay? I have a root three here, I'll have another root three up there, so that's root three, okay? So let's use Pythagoras' theorem now on this one, okay? So even though I don't know either side, it doesn't matter because the length of both sides are the same. So therefore I have CE squared is equal to CD squared plus DE squared, okay? Just writing out the formula in case you're looking back at the video and you can see the sides that I'm taking. So I have two root three, all to be squared, is equal to x squared plus x squared. Okay, make sure you put the two root three into, into a bracket so that the two as well as the root three gets squared, okay? If you don't put the bracket there, what ends up happening is the root three gets squared, but not the two, okay? So you get 12 for that is equal to uh, 2x squared, divide across by 2, 
So x is equal to root six. Okay, and it said to leave it as a cert. Okay. If you've enjoyed this video, then why not join us in IT Sligo and use maths in practice? In conjunction with industry, we've designed an exciting new program in electronics and self-driving technologies, which uses cutting-edge techniques such as artificial intelligence, computer vision and virtual and augmented reality. You'll need a H5 in maths to qualify. Check out the link below.